Before I go, I just still want to maintain that the, the, the Chelsea fan base has to stay positive. It's just two games. Let's not have a knee-jerk reaction and be calm. I mean, and enjoy the football. Yeah. 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 Th thanks. Uh, big up, JC. Take care. Big up, JC. Thanks yeah. for yeah. coming on. Don't right, forget to Bobby. hydrate. Right, Bobby. You, you thought you were getting away with the night, but we've drew you in. Let's hear it. What do you think about all this slander, well, Bobby. hysteria, big up, nonsense? Bro. About, Preach, Bobby. Oh, obviously, we don't want to lose games, but I think I think we're going a little bit over the top. Absolutely, absolutely. We don't want to lose games, you know. I, like everybody else, I get hurt, I get angry when we lose. But, you know, there's perspective. And a lot of Chelsea fans are not taking perspective into account. Um, many of them are speaking very ignorantly, which is disappointing. And having expectations on individual players, which shows an absolute lack of understanding. Look, um, you know, they're attacking De Sassi who's only been at the club five minutes, wasn't at pre-season, barely had a pre-season himself and was thrown in the deep end. So, of course, he's going to struggle a little bit, surrounded by players he doesn't know, don't know him. I think he's done quite well in two games, really, considering. Then the one that really gets me laughing is they're asking for flipping Caicedo and Lavia to start on Friday. I mean, really? We'll be lucky if, if we follow the proper process to see them in, properly in three weeks. I mean, they'll be given minutes, maybe, maybe, but preseason has just started for them. Um, Caicedo didn't have a preseason. Lavia didn't really have a preseason. Yeah, they're fit boys, but they've got to be conditioned and they've got to be integrated into this whole new team full of strangers. Everybody's a stranger in this team, including the manager who has to see the strangers he's got and integrate them into his different tactics based on what he comes across in the Premier League. I mean, it's going to take some time. I'm not really seeing this team being able to perform at optimal capacity before December. I'm just praying that on that journey, we keep managing to just win games and survive. You know, the, the squad's not even complete. Yeah, we've got this new goalkeeper who's having his medical tomorrow, but we still have two more purchases. Um, the sort of winger stroke 10, right winger stroke 10, um, maybe overlapping a little bit as a striker. And indeed, I still think we're going to get a striker. You know, people are talking about Brozier, but, you know, I think that's left to be seen. If he comes back firing on all cylinders uh, before January, I think that will be a wonderful a testimony to his genetics because I don't see it personally. Yeah, he's back training a little bit, but he had a major injury which wrecks most careers and absolutely yeah. prevents players from from optimising to their initial potential. So it's a wait and see and we're quite right to get, um, get in uh, a player. Look, Poch was very clear. He wants a 22-23 man squad with five from the academy to be able to dip in and for him to be blooding into the first team. He's not going to budge from that. So if we get in a, another striker and then suddenly Brozier becomes fit, he has a decision to make. He will offload one, whether we like it or not. And at the moment, sadly, it will probably be Brozier because I think he has a long way to go. Uh, but, you know, let's wait and see who comes in before the transfer window ends. You know, we have a team... Of, I mean, look at the players that have come in. Hugo Chukus, uh, the DM that you were just talking about, he's somebody I think should be playing ahead of Lavia and Caicedo. One, I don't know him that well, but I see his physicality and I know it was definitely needed against he's a bruiser. West Ham. It, well, he's, you know, he's a big, tall lad and we need it. That's Premier League football. West Ham is all about that. Luton's going to be all about that. And we need that defensive cover uh, in the air. We saw how West Ham scored their first goal. You know, the, the defender that scored completely dwarfed um, um, Gallagher and actually managed to, you know, dwarf um, Carney a bit. And he's not sure. So no. you can imagine, yeah. you know, a lot of these teams that want to come physical against us are having six foot six defenders and midfielders and really it's trying a mismatch, to, isn't it? Yeah, land of the giants against us. And even if we even if well even when we do have Lavia and Caicedo back, 
you know, they wouldn't have been able to do anything about that corner. We've got to come up with different tactics to get the big boys, you know, clearing corners, just like when we had uh, Makaleli and uh, we'd get Drogba back there, although we're quite blessed with some tall midfielders in the likes of Lampard and Ballack. Um, but, you know, we, we got our attackers to do our defensive work until we had the likes of um, Mikel, who used to hold his own, certainly in terms of in the height stakes at the back. We, physicality is part of Premier League football, whether we like it or not. A major part. You, yeah, if you're not prepared for it, other teams will look at you as a pushover and come bully you off the field. You know, look at Man City. Man, one of the reasons Man City looks so invis, invincible is Rodri. And he's a headache to, um, to um, uh, uh, Guardiola. Because not only is he technically good, he's physically good. That's why he's playing game in, game out. He's getting overplayed, actually. Or Yaya Toure, right? He, he, Yaya Toure was sort of in the past, but he is the replica of Yaya Toure. Yeah, exactly. You, you watch a lot of their wins, a lot of their, their steel is down to him. You know, they've got big boys in defence, but that defensive midfield that he provides is, is huge. It's so important, so they can't be bullied. So they win the fight and then win the technical game, so win the match. Um, we have to get to that uh, so that you don't come looking for a fight with us because you know you're wasting time, like Chelsea of old, with the old John Terry's and Lampard's and that. You want to scrap, they'll scrap with you on the field. You want to play football, they'll play football and scrap with you. So, <laughs> you know, so and smile. scared. Yeah, and smile. <laughs> That's where yeah. we want to be. You know, so, we're in for the scrap, in for the football, and we'll scrap, we'll beat you up along the way as well. So um, We can't be a finesse team, Bobby. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, going forward, I just think against uh, Luton, um, I, I don't know, you know, what the, the training grounds uh, plans have been, but I would have Ugo Chuku, the defensive midfield. He's a specialist, that's his area. I would have Gallagher in. Gallagher's going nowhere this summer. All these dreamers and agenda merchants about Gallagher. Gallagher is one of the most improved players, along with Carney Chukwemeka. Bless him, he's got had an injury, which I think is just a blooming pain because he's vastly improved. He was getting better every every game. And every when minute. they criticise him of not scoring, he scores. And now he adds that and then he goes off injured. But him and Gallagher are the most improved players in that team. And for anybody to even contemplate him going just because he doesn't have the optics and the silky skills, I think is just insane. He provides so much to that team. Industry. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. He, you know, he really does. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's midfield. And he, in midfield, allows Enzo to go forward. He's been a little bit disappointing recently, to be honest. But um, he allows Enzo to go forward and... Um, you know, exhibit his tricks. I think he's vital. Well, um, he's a when... different player from last year. Oh, definitely, 100%. You know, and when, when um, Caicedo and Lavia come back, well, they've got, got a bit of competition in, in Gallagher. You know, they're going to have to somewhat fight for their place. I know Caicedo will get it in no problem, but we have to allow them to optimise. It's like I said in, in the space earlier, uh, Roger was there, you know, if you watch heavyweight boxing, the the fighters go into training for months before they get in the ring. Why? First of all, to save their life. Yep. Two, to avoid injury. And three, to optimize performance. They don't go anywhere near a ring until they're fit and ready. And we should have that with Caicedo and Lavia. Though, I mean, what are the opposition fans and some silly Chelsea de uh, uh, detractors waiting for? They're waiting to say, yeah, Chelsea buy uh, Brighton players and they flop. They, you know, they, they were making fun of what a waste of money. Imagine saying that about Caicedo. The guy, yeah. the guy, you know, the guy has barely played football. He tried his best. Yeah, a few misplaced passes, a little bit of match rustiness. It's clear it was going to happen. Um, you know, I, I felt really sorry for him. He was thrown into it when perhaps he shouldn't have been. And, you know, they were all rubbing their hands, you know, these Liverpool fans. Oh, Especially Carragher. We dodged a bullet there. Yeah, all that sort of nonsense. Crap. Let, let's be patient. 
We don't see him start. That's fine. Absolutely fine. Comes on 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Check this is his preseason. Every preseason, players play minutes. Play maybe 30 minutes this game, then maybe 45 the next game, then maybe 60 minutes the next game. If we do that with him, we're going to be all right. We get him up to speed and then he'll start balling out for us. I say they never had a preseason, did he? Not at all. And I don't yeah. think Lavia did either. And I, I'm not sure this this he did either. So we've got all these new geezers that we're expecting to rip up trees after not being conditioned. It's not fair. And you know the scary thing about it? If you don't get them fit and up to speed, this is where we start getting injuries. And yeah. then people say, oh, Chelsea players always get injured. Well, of course they flipping get injured. You're playing them when, they're, when their muscles are cold, as it were. Yeah, so time. I'll say big, big up to Constantine Dante in the house. <laughs> I was trying to do a coach here for him, but uh, it's not as good, but it's no bad. And definitely, I've got a cracker for you, and then we'll go to uh, Roger Dodger. Uh, it's the new sustainability rules next season are getting implemented. It's going to be 90% of wages. Uh, your con oh wait no, I'm reading the wrong one it's uh, you can only spend 90% of your income which includes your wages your agent fees your net transfer costs are you hearing that all you rival fans net transfer costs okay. yeah. and, Michi, and, and, and it's it. not it's not I'm, retrospective so I'm, whatever I'm, we do now next season it's a blank slate we've still got the three years financial fair play but the sustainability rules is 90% next year the year after it's going to 80% the year after it's going to go to 70% so that's why the club is bringing down the wages guys exactly they're exactly. ahead they're ahead <laughs> They're, They're ahead of the curve. and They knew They're way before. The Thank you. Thank you, Michi. These guys are smart. They see the rules. They're not using the rules. They're not breaking the rules. But they're doing smart business within the boundaries of the rules. And they're, they, they've seen ahead. That's why they're doing what they're doing. And all these fools come on spaces criticising oh, why the owner's buying kids. There you go. This is why, mm. Michi, you're a top man, a very intelligent uh, that, man. That's why we ain't getting Neymar. That's why we're not getting a Ninja Turtle uh, Mbappe. What do you think, indefinite? I think and that's you why know we're what? Not I, it, thought these big names that are just going to come and demand big wages. That's why yep. we didn't pay big wages to Havertz or Mount or anybody. That's why we're trying to offload your likes or, of, of Ziyech and 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 Callum Hudson Odoi, which I'm Kepa, Kepa, Kepa as well. Careful. Yeah, yeah, that's we're true. fixing everything. We're fixing yeah. everything. Everything's going to be fixed. You know, I think that I think that's a part of what I mean. I don't know when this was implemented, but that must have been talked about beforehand. And so I think that's also why they want the long contracts, because if you have the long contracts at a fixed amount, they know exactly what their wage bill is. So they're always going to fit within the sustainability rules. They know it's going to last for X, Y and Z amount of time. FFP comes into play you know, every three years or whatever that window is. And so they're they're constraining everything to fit those limitations. It's, it's smart business because even the transfer fees like we talked about were fixed over those periods of time. So we're not shelling out hundreds and hundreds of millions at a time, even though we spent a billion. We're shelling out, you know, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million. And they they come at us and say we're cheats, but that's how we're doing it. And it's fixed payments over seven years, eight years, and nine indefinite, years. Indefinite, indefinite. Listen, I, I lived in the states for nearly thirty years. This is second nature to American sports: NFL, baseball. I know basketball's a, a bit of a soft cap, but the NFL has been—they've had salary caps since the early nineties. Yep. They're, they're full aware of the ramifications and the implications. This is second nature to them, and it's very new for Europe. So they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, and, and like the thing is, is like you said, Mitchie, they're either going to be geniuses or fools. I mean, I haven't agreed with all the way they spent money and came in at the beginning. I'm not going to lie. At the beginning of this, I was very skeptical. You know, I'm, I still am somewhat skeptical. But at the same time, we can't say that they're misstepping as, in terms of the rules and regulations that we have to follow. Because that transfer ban before, that should be happening to Man City. These things should be happening to other teams too, Man U, et cetera. But it's not. 
So it's like we're we're trying we it, it's only a con when it's not your game or it's not or it's not you. You know, you're only cheating when it's not you. We're following all the rules. So that's my thing. You know, however people may see us as that's what it is. We're doing everything within the fine lines and, and what it says within the fine print. So yeah. you can get upset about it as much as you want, but if other teams had done the same thing and utilized what already existed, they could be they could have been doing the same exact thing we're doing. That's how we got Caicedo. That's how we got Enzo. Wow. It's not rocket science. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's like you have, the, you have a speed limit of a maximum speed limit on the motorway of seventy, and you're a driver that drives at the at seventy. And you don't get a ticket and keep people are complaining, oh, you drive too fast. I know it's a silly uh, um, example, but we're just maximizing our our capacity within the boundaries of the rules. That is smart thinking. That's perfect thinking. And anyone complaining about is good about business that. sense, Bobby. It is. If they, they use what you call forensic accounting and, and they have um, legal experts to read the fine pin as indefinite said, and, and they apply the rules and adhere to them accordingly. It's that simple, gentlemen. Yeah. As I said, this is second nature to American owners in sports because it's ubiquitous there. Right, Coomber, let Coomber have a wee shot. You there, pal? Coomber? I'm in it, yeah. Yeah, the amortization, uh, an example yeah. of that is, uh, say, Mujic's 88 million, you spread it over you spread mm. it over his contract, say it's like 10 million a year. That's what you pay for that player each year. And obviously all these players, it all adds up. And that's why you've maybe starting each year with 200 million, your start off thing. You're already 200 million down and you've got that for 69 years. So that's the sustainability part of it. And what Goddy Frogs is saying in the chat is he's wanting all these world-class players the now. The problem with that, Goddy Frogs, is in a couple of years' time, if you buy these world-class players, you've got to start again and you've got to spend the money again. And the, the, the way this is set up with sustainability and stuff like that, that's going to stop. So what you're going to have to do is what our club's doing at the moment. The moment, we're just ahead of the curve. That's all it is. We're ahead of the curve. There's big risks involved, but we're ahead of the curve because that's what's going to happen. This big spending is going to be knocked in the head. You'll have to take in what you take in and then put money out. It's going to be in and out, in and out. Now, everything has to balance out. Now, we haven't got the biggest revenues. You know, Man United get more than us. Other clubs Huge get amount. more than us. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have to catch up commercially as well, Goddy Frogs. So unless we catch up with these people, we won't be able to buy all these players in the future anyway. So you're talking about spending money. In a few years, we're not going to be able to spend that money. What do you think, Coomba? I completely agree. Um, this, this, this model is obviously... Um, is buying young players, like you said, and um, hopefully reaching their full potential with us. Um, but like you said, we're taking huge risk on these players. You know, these are on big contracts, big money, um, and um, you know, long. It's a, it's a big risk uh, moving forward. And um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm sure not all of them will work out. But I mean, obviously, the, the ones that you have signed so far, are, well, the, the majority of them are working out. Um, and obviously, we are, it's nice to see we're bringing through Cobbin boys as well. Obviously, you've got you know Matson, you've got um, uh, Carl Well coming through as well. So it's good to see that we're giving these boys a chance. And I think that's one of the reasons why Pochettino's come. Uh, they've, they've put Pochettino as manager because he can get the best out of these young players. That's the reason why he's there. Um, so yeah, uh, the actual project that that that, that I've got going. These guys are smart, like like, like uh, Roger said. They know what they're doing. Um, you know, and um, they they. I mean. Who would have thought putting these these players on eight year contract was? I mean, this was unheard of two or three years ago, uh, before they came in. Unheard of. No one even thought to do that. So clearly that they have business brains, um, and you know they they found a loophole that no one even had, had ever tried before. So, it was done you know, before, but very rarely. Like Gary Neville's signed a seven year contract. He was saying in an interview, but that was unheard of. It was it wasn't done for every player, which Chelsea have done. And obviously the powers that be didn't like it. And they adjusted the rules accordingly. But you're right. It's, we we took it think to it, an art form. Yeah, I don't think it was ever done before. Where 